All right, as promised, we're in already into module one. We're going to find your palette. We're going to create your sound. We're going to we're going to figure out what kind of sound you want to go for. Right now included in this package, which is something I put together and it's taken me years to put together is a full list of 30 different sync briefs where you're going to get uh, you're going to get actual track. notes on what what kind of style it is the kind of drums is it organic is it electronic so please feel free to reach into that resource to start your track now i'm not you i don't know what kind of style you're looking for if you're an artist if you're a rapper or if you're a singer um, but what i decided to do on this one is i go okay i think i'm going to do like a stomp clap pop kind of thing that's really popular in sync licensing right uh, I've made a lot of sync licensing um, records that have gone on to, you know, be on Lexus commercials, Microsoft commercials, Nike commercials, uh, you know, Super Bowl commercials even. So I'm really excited to just kind of like dive into this with uh, kind of an idea, right? We want to stay modern though. We want to stay relevant. So I also included some mo some modern drum sounds that you guys can pull from as well from our radium kits okay so those are things that'll get you started so you're not just using the stock sounds in logic and i also included the logic production pack uh the starter pack i included some of the presets in there so that you can go through and you can start dialing in your sound and mix as you go so let's look at the screen real quick and this is kind of the first thing that's really daunting about logic pro right you're faced with this screen that says like okay you want audio software instrument like what do you want to do here it's your call joe and i'm not joe i'm bradley but you know you might be joe all right logic's just going to make you have something so it doesn't matter what it is but because we are going to be composing right away i'm just going to go software instrument okay i'm going to have an empty channel strip or you can pick something from here okay now i'm going to just start building a palette of sounds because i know i'm going for like a stompy kind of clap rock thing the first thing i usually do when i'm going to write a song is i have that in mind like what genre what style am i thinking in my head right and uh sure you can reference songs you can reference stuff you can go to the the sync briefs that are included in this package and you can start going through and go oh i think that's cool you know i'm gonna pick that but the first thing I want to do is just kind of like get a tempo going, right? Like I want to have a feel like I'm thinking like a boom, 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 like just start, start thinking about a rhythm or start thinking about a melody or start thinking about something, right? So for me, I'm thinking like stompy drums, you know, maybe 60s or 70s kind of sounding drums. Um, claps, definitely hand claps, maybe tambourine, um, maybe like a dirty synth, you know, like a, you know, bluesy kind of rock style. So I just right away start thinking about the, uh, the tempo, you know, I'm like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know? So right here, I'm just going to kind of like, uh, I'm going to turn on the click. You're going to hit C. I don't know what the key commands are for you, minor kind of custom, but turn on your click and then just start listening and that's way too fast, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm just going to kind of start listening to the click and start adjusting it. Okay. 115 sounds great for me. Okay. So now I have like a tempo. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to save this project. Always start by saving your project. I'm going to save it as, let's call it Stomp, uh, Stomp Rock, Blues, I don't know, just whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, 115 BPM. Just put the BPM right in the title. You might change the BPM and then you change the BPM in the title. All good. All we're doing right now is just getting a palette, getting a sound together, okay? So I'm going to just put this in my library in sync and I'm going to, uh, yeah, just pop it right here, hit save. Okay, now I have something saved. I'm going to start coming up with some sounds, all right? So let's go to just instruments that are built into logic. Uh, one thing I like to start with sometimes is like, hey, what if we just made a drummer track? So we go plus up here, as you can see, I'm going to click drummer and then I'm going to go, okay, do I want alternative? Do I want rock? Okay, probably like rock or alternative. So I'm going to start with rock. I'm going to hit create. Now, right away, you get SoCal Kit. You get Crash the Party, Echo Park, Golden State, Half Pipe, Mixtape. You see all these uh, these presets down here right now i want to try to find something that's going to be a you know like a stompy kind of thing so um i don't know let's try golden state 
Okay, and then this is where in within this little area, you can pick loud and simple or loud and complex or soft and complex. As you can see, complex here, loud, simple, soft. So you can kind of just like start thinking, I want like a loud, but kind of simple, probably, you know, just like a stompy thing, okay? Now let's just listen to this and see what it came up with. Totally the wrong vibe, right? Like I'm thinking more halftime. I'm thinking like, you know, so I just like automatically know that that's not right. So if you click on this track again, the, the drummer track, you'll get the drummer down here again and you could just kind of go through stuff. One thing I would do is just read the audio file. You could see where the kick and the snares are, right? So maybe I need to go even loud and more simple. Okay, so let's just kind of flip through some presets and see if we can get that sound that I want, the one, two, three, four, to one, two, three, four. Just the, the, we want the kick on the one and we want the snare on the three. Okay, so right now I have like, this is kind of fundamental, got a drum sound, all good. I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna turn the percussion down and I'm going to, the cymbals are pretty loud and out of control. So that's okay, I'm just gonna leave that for now. And then I might go up like one on the kick and snare. This is basically saying like, how much of the kick and snare do you want, right? So I want it a little bit busier, let's say, right? So you can say, I don't want it that busy. I want it really busy. Like I want to do, you know, like ghost notes and everything. Or I want it like really basic, okay? So let's start with basic, maybe go up one. And then let's see what this is. Okay, cool. Some nice little built-in fills and everything. I'm just going to stick with that. That's just a part of the palette. I'm just getting sounds together, right? Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to find some, I'm going to find some sounds that would go along with kind of the vibe that I'm trying to get, okay? So we're building a palette right now. We just want to get some sounds together. So instrument, let's go to uh, some built-in stuff. It doesn't need to be anything else. Let's go to like drum kit designer. And let's start to... Uh, get some drums that I think you know will be like more rocky and then as I said we're gonna mix as we go so I'm gonna show you kind of like okay I'm gonna throw a distortion on this I'm gonna like get this sound kind of dialed in right and if you have a MIDI keyboard you can play the sounds off your MIDI keyboard so I really like this kick drum what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this kick drum and I'm actually just gonna call this uh, you know kick and now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just kind of dirty it up, right? Because we want it dirty. So we'll go to, the first thing is distortion. Let's try like an overdrive, right? And you can also just pull from, uh, you know, you know, presets if you want to, if you want to just get going with some presets. Uh, like you could go like creamy tube. That sounds good, that sounds big. I'll mute my microphone so you can really hear it. Okay, now let's put a little reverb on that. Let's make it more of like a big stompy kind of clap rock thing, right? So I'm just gonna actually uh, do a send here and I'm gonna send it to a reverb. So I'm gonna pick bus. You can pick whatever, bus one is fine. Um, and then make sure you're sending a little bit there so you can hear the reverb when you play it. And then go to your audio effects. These are your inserts, right? And then I'm gonna find a reverb. So here I'm gonna go to reverb and let's go with like a space designer and find like maybe a big room, wooden room, big hall, something like that, right? Um, let's go in here and I think there's some presets in here, right? Okay, so load IR. And then you can go to plates. Plates might actually be cool or a spring reverb even, right? Like, let's find something that's going to have a pretty long tail. So let's try lo-fi amp mid. So that's pretty cool. Like, it has a, like an air to it. I think that's cool. Um, I'm going to take the wet all the way up because we're sending it, remember? So we're actually taking a duplicate of the kick sound and we're, like, sending it to the reverb. All right, so I'm going to mute this and I'll let you just hear what I got here. Okay, I don't like the spring because I don't like that ring, ring, and that's what a spring is, right? It's gonna make that sound. Uh, so let's load a plate. I think a plate will be a lot nicer uh, for this kind of idea. So we'll go to plates, and we will pick 
you know, you got big plate, new age plate, vocal plate. Um, I want around like probably three seconds. So you can see the 3.1 seconds up here. Okay, and let's hear this. That's sounding really cool, right? So now let's uh, let's compress it a little bit. I'm just mixing as I go, guys. Like this is how I I typically make a palette. I just kind of start designing the sounds right away. So let's go in here and let's grab a uh, a dynamic and let's grab a compressor. And I'm just gonna start to dirty up this sound, but I'm gonna compress it to crap as well, right? So a classic VCA or a vintage VCA, like this is an SSL style uh, compressor. You can also just go up here and find like drums and say like, okay, FET live drums or rock kick. There you go, right? And then you could switch it to the VCA or the FET. All right, but let's hear what this did. I like it. It's giving it a little bit more extension. It's making a little bit more punchy, a little bit fatter. We can also take the overdrive and put it after the compressor and see what that sounds like. So let's check that out. Ooh, that's way better for me, right? Like I'm like, goo, goo. Like now it's starting to feel like it's in that zone. It's in that area where I can start programming those drums and it's going to sound big, right? It's going to sound like what we want, this clap, like stomp, clap rock stuff. All right, so great. I got some drums. I got something down here. Uh, next thing, just for housekeeping, I will grab an EQ and I'll just sweep out some bottom stuff just because I know that it'll need to be sweeped out. So uh, come up here and I'll usually do like a 24 uh, dB per octave slope and I'll just take it up to, you know, maybe 30 hertz or something, right? And then uh, I might give it a little bit more beef on the low end. Like I might go around here, uh, let's go 30 and then let's take this uh, orange and let's just kind of bring it up a little bit So maybe around 80 80 and below we're gonna shelve it a little bit just to get a little bit a little more thickness, right? Because this is gonna be the kick and we might use it for the snare as well, but let, let's check out what the snare sounds here That's pretty rad, right? So next thing I want to do is I want to find some claps. Uh, you can also like use the kits in this instant that I've included. So you can go to our kits and you can grab some claps. You can go to uh, Splice. You can go to whatever resources you have. Um, on this one, I'm just going to reach to Splice because I think it'll be a really simple way to find some claps that I'm looking for. So I'm going to find a uh, clap, right? I just type in clap. And I like that you can do that. You can also do in logic. If you go to the search over here, you have like your loops over here. You have uh, your browser, your project browser, notepad. Um, you have here, you have your events, marker, tempo, signature. You know, just spend some time checking out logic and really navigating it. But in here, I'm just gonna go, like you could go to a, like a pack, right? Like a loop pack. And you can find, uh, you know, an instrument and, and then go like claps or tambourines or percussion or whatever, right? So I could literally just type in claps you know, or clap or clap loop or whatever. So you can see some of this stuff kind of shows up. Fin, claps loose, claps tight. Um, it doesn't look like I have them downloaded, but if I just click the download here, it'll download those loops into my library, onto my computer. Just depends on if you have the space or not, but you can try some of these. We're at 115 BPM. So you can see here, I'll probably reach towards the 120 to, you know, in this area. 90 BPM is a little bit uh, further off, but I'll find something that's closer to the BPM that I'm working in uh, to loop and find that loop. But there's one big thing here you have to remember is this yellow means that it's MIDI and then the blue means that it's audio. So you're probably going to be better off using MIDI or um, or loops that are based on MIDI because then you could kind of time stretch them to anything and it's not going to affect the sound. But if you pick the audio and you start to time stretch it too much to your tempo, it's going to mess up the sound and it'll give artifacts, right? And artifacts are like clicks and pops and weirdness in the in the audio. So here I'm just going to kind of check these out. So let's mute my microphone and check them out. Okay, so I really like these, these Quincy claps. And for me, I like to layer stuff, right? So I'm going to grab these Quincy claps. I'm going to pop those in. 
and you can see it, it opens up the drummer, which is pretty cool, right? So now I can like change whatever. I can make it more complex, more simple, whatever. I can layer in a tambourine, right? So that's kind of cool. Like I go like, okay, I want a tambourine on top of that. So see how it like added a tambourine. So it's just going to make it a little bit more human. Now I'm going to, I'm going to mute this, uh, this SoCal kit that we have, and I'm just going to hear these claps by themselves. So you can hear that they're on the uh, on the two and the four, and we actually want them to be on the three. Okay, so the one, two, three, two, one, two, three. So it's almost like we're doing like a halftime thing. So one thing that's really cool about Logic is when you find claps like this or something uh, in the drummer, you can actually drag them to a MIDI channel, which is really dope. So like, for example, if I have, um, you know, you can see this is... So this right here is actually a MIDI track. So if I drag this in, and you could tell because you could see it on the uh, on the emblem here, or maybe it's not. No, that's the drummer track again. But here, let's try something else. Sometimes if you drag it over, you can yeah. So if you drag it over into this list area, into an empty area, it'll ask you if you want to do a drum machine designer, quick sampler, optimized. So I'll just go grab a, a drum machine designer, and it'll drop all the samples into a designer, which is really cool right and it'll chop them all so now i can actually play those claps with a drum machine designer so now i can put them on the on the threes like i wanted and you can see it just made like a midi region so it's like playing the midi as if it would play the loop right so we can just delete that and we can program our own midi later so those are some claps. Uh, the next thing I want to do with these claps is remember we're trying to get a palette together. I want to distort them and put them kind of in the same world as the uh, the kick snare, right? So here's our kick dirty. I'm going to bring the claps up here, and I'm going to hit X to go to our mixer. Um, your your uh, your key command might be different than mine, right? But um, I'm going to hit X, and then I'm just going to drag over from this to the claps. I'm going to go, okay, I want this EQ, I want the compressor, and I want the overdrive. And then I also want to go to bus one again with this, which is I'm sending that reverb again with the claps as well. Okay, And then you could send as much as you want. Now let's, let's play these claps. Okay, and then one thing I'm noticing about the uh, reverb is that it's really bright. So what I can do is I can just go to the EQ and I can just top, like take the top into this and just roll it off a little bit. Cause I don't want to go in like in the reverb. Cause think about like where vocals will be and everything, right? So let's hear that. much better right now we have like this dark reverb that's like really cool so now i got the claps kind of distorted with the drum kit so now we got like some cool stuff going so let's i'm just going to program a really quick simple drum pattern just so i can get the feel of what this drum kit is actually doing Okay, so once you put a kick drum down and you want this to sound kind of human, but you also want it to be on time, you can double click on the MIDI region and you can select all by hitting Command A and it's going to select all these notes, right? So Command A is going to select all your MIDI notes and then you can go up here and you can quantize it to, you know, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, whatever. This is really an eighth note vibe, so I'm just going to hit uh, eighth note swing A, okay? And it's going to lock it to a grid a little bit. Now, what I like to do is I like to humanize things just a little bit, right? So what I'll do is I'll make sure that on the downbeat, I'm always hitting down right on the one. So that first hit has to be on the one. The second hit or maybe like pickup hits like this, they can be swung back just a little bit. So I just like swing it back. Like I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. Just give it a human feel. And then I might also finish that loop off, that four bar loop with another little, uh, you know, hit here. So 
we can go here and we can um, you know give it a little pickup note as well so I'll swing that even a little bit further so let's hear that So now we're getting like this big stadium kind of vibe. So let's put these claps down on the uh, on the threes. Now what I did there is I just selected all the MIDI notes down here and I hit Q and Q is going to quantize them. Okay. So that's going to lock them to a grid. Okay. And, uh, you can also go in and make sure that the claps that are happening, maybe like every other one is just swung a little bit, you know, it doesn't matter right now. I'm not going to talk too much about programming. We'll get into that in later modules, but right now I'm just trying to get the sound of the kit. Like I want to get a, a good palette together for my sounds. That's really, really important in this process. Okay, so there we go. We got that, and um, we got a little drum pattern there. Let's throw the uh, let's throw the snare on there as well. So Command D is going to duplicate the track I have, and I'm going to call this one Snare. Okay, so this is going to be called Snare One Dirty, and then I'm going to bring the snare down just a little bit, right? Because I got claps in there, I want it to be layered in, and I'm going to find that snare, and I'm just going to program that snare in there. Really easy way to do this is literally just grab these claps option drag them so you see the plus show up and you're going to copy them down exactly where the claps are hitting is where your snare is going to hit and then you can select all of these midi notes right and you can make sure that you if you hold down option and you go up and down arrow it'll take it up the keyboard okay so like i'm holding down option and i'm going up and i'm just hitting up arrow until i find the snare or maybe it's down right There it is. And we even have a clap in this kit as well. So maybe what I do is I layer in the claps with the other claps for now, right? So I'm gonna just grab these MIDI notes and I'm gonna do the same thing, bring them down to that clap. By holding down option and going down and up arrow, you're moving the MIDI around, okay? Okay, so I'm just going all claps on this. So now let's hear these together stacked up. So that pickup note at the end is kind of bugging me uh, for the kick. I think it is a little too late. So let's just move it back and just get it on the grid. So there you go. There I have like a very simple drum pattern. And this is just part of my palette, right? Like, and I think it's starting to sound really cool. Like it sounds like, you know, big. But um, as I mix as I go and I'm building a palette, that's what I want to show you guys. I want you to really get this, the sound and the creation of your palette. Like your sounds have to be exciting. Don't start composing with sounds that aren't exciting. And as you're composing, you got to find your, your textures and your sonics, right? So right now I'm going to take all of these drums that I've built so far, which is literally just claps, a couple claps and a kick drum, right? Very basic. So I'm going to take these drums on the top. I'm actually just going to delete this other stuff because I don't really need it. I was just kind of trying to find sounds. So I'm going to grab these. These are all my drums. I'm going to hit X to go to my mixer. I'm going to take all these out, not from the stereo out, but I'm going to bust them to their own bus. I'm going to say bus six. Uh, this is bus six that it made. I'm going to call this the drum bus. Okay, hopefully you're following along. We're busing all these drum, all these different channels of drums to one bus, to a stereo bus. Now we can throw a compressor on this. We can EQ it. We can distort it more. We can make it more exciting. Whatever we want to do with it, right? So I'm going to use a third-party plugin uh, just because I'm really fast with this EQ. Um, I'll use the FabFilter Pro Q3. Don't worry if you don't have this EQ. You can use the channel EQ built into Logic. I'm just going to go here. I'm going to sweep out the low stuff, like down to 22, somewhere around there. I'm going to also kind of give this a little boost bump, like around 40 to 50 hertz, right? Just to give me that boom, like that big beefy stuff, right? And that EQ is just going to be fine. Uh, and then this way I can also like take out stuff I don't want um, as I go. All right. And shape it. That's what I'm doing. I'm shaping sounds. 
All right, and then I'm gonna throw a compressor on here. And this time I'm going to use the Waves Bundle. And you might have the Waves Bundle, right? And one of my favorite uh, EQ or compressors for drums is the API 2500. I use the UAD version. I think it sounds better to my ears and I've been you know, engineering for a very long time. But the Waves version is still pretty cool and it's gonna do what you need it to do. So in here, I'm just gonna grab a preset. I'm just gonna go to factory presets. I'm gonna say drum kit one. <laughs> wow, there you go. Right, and then I'm gonna make sure that I uh, I have the gain reduction on the meter. Uh, so I'm checking out gain reduction as I see this gain reduction needle go up. This is showing you how much it's compressing, okay? So if it goes up to negative three, it's compressing negative. It's taking three dB off of your signal, okay? My attack, I know I'm gonna want it more like one to 30 like literally i'm gonna i'm gonna put it at three just for now but you want it you want it slow enough for the for the punch to come through of the kick and the snare and the claps you know uh that i want two to one on the ratio i don't want to compress too much um i'm just kind of gluing things together for now on the tone i'm gonna go to medium and on the knee i'm gonna leave it at medium and new is good here i'm gonna turn off all these filters I'm going to make sure 100% link is on. You know, that's linking the stereo. So the left side is compressing just the same way the right side's compressing, okay? So this is all good. Now I'm going to turn the analog off because in the Waves plugin, that's just noise. It's like, which I don't need more noise, right? So there you go. I got a compressor. I got an EQ. Um, and let's just hear this drum bus and start to compress it. So it's just getting about 2 to 3 dB of compression is really what I'm looking for. Okay, cool. So now it's starting to give me a little breath, give me a little life. That compression's adding some stuff. Now, if I want to take it the extra mile with compression and with getting more of that aggressive big feel, I'll take that drum bus and I'll send it out to a um, another bus, which will be my drum parallel compression, okay? And I'll just say DRP comp. So that's just like parallel compression. So I can send... 100% uh, of this, if you option click on the send knob, it'll just turn it to 100%. And then I have this drum P comp. I'll just literally option drag this API over. And then also the, the Pro Q3. And I know for my parallel compression, I'm not going to want this bump, right? Because I'm just starting to exaggerate so many frequencies. I don't want to do that. And I actually want to sweep out probably a little more low end. And I want to use the parallel compression more for punch and bringing up low, um, like low level information okay all right so i'm going to remove this like 256 area like that's going to be a lot of information it's really punchy already so on the parallel i'm just going to take some of that out so i can blend it back in all right so let's hear that with the parallel compression blending uh, i'll start bringing it in All right, so you can start hearing this thing start, like the drums start getting real thick. They're getting big. They're getting deeper, right? So that parallel compression is going to do me a lot of good. I really like that. I'm going to label my uh, verb. I'm going to say reverb. As you go, just always remember to label things, right? It's very important. So I got a drum bus. I got a drum parallel compression. I got a kick clap sort of thing going. Uh, I really got my palette starting, you know? So now let's get into like a bass sound because this kind of uh, this kind of vibe definitely needs like a good heavy synth bass or acoustic electric bass, something, you know? So um, let's get that going. And... Uh, also, this was just a little pointer. You have a solo button here. You can also hit S on the tracks, and that'll solo the track. And then you can hit the down arrow, and you can just kind of solo through your tracks. As opposed to, and then hit S again, it'll unsolo. As opposed to going here and soloing, right? Because then when you, you put it on a different track, it doesn't solo that track. So that's kind of annoying. And then this is your solo safe button, right? So you can clear or recall your solos, which is really cool. So just something to keep in mind. I just wanted to show you that because I came across it. So now as we build a palette, we have our drums, 
cool. That's great. What are you going to do with drums? Right. Drums are cool. But, um, as far as like, you got to think about the, the genre and what you're actually making right now. So if you're making trap music, you got to think about the kick, the snare, the trap hats, the 808, right? You got to think about the fundamental rhythmic instruments. Now within this program, I'm providing you a bunch of cool stuff. And if you bought the upgrades, you're going to get even more stuff. You're going to get the sounds, you're going to get the kits, the loop packs, all that stuff, which makes production way easier, right? It makes it faster, especially if you're trying to sync license and stuff. So right now I'm going to start using some tools that help speed things up. So I'm going to start getting into some third party plugins and things that you may or may not have. That's okay. I'll always give you guys examples of what you could use in Logic if you don't have those plugins, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a bass. Uh, a bass synth sound would be great. Let's just do, let's keep it Logic stock on this one and let's go to, um, let's go to like the retro synth. The retro synth is great for this. Um, also Alchemy is good. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll say like bass synth, right? And then I'll, I'll hit Command D again. I'm gonna duplicate the track, right? And then I'm going to pick uh, Alchemy because Alchemy is like a really cool synth that's built into Logic. Now, it also has a great browser. So like here, I can pick from all this stuff, right? Or I can go into here and I can go, okay, I want bass sounds and I want it to be electric or sub, right? Whatever you're looking for. And then I could say all, all, and I want like a fat, I want dark, whatever. Like, let's go nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. Uh, wobble bass, probably not what I'm looking for. Heavy sub bass, probably good, right? Let's try some of these presets out. I'm just going to play them, go through them, and check them out. This is great. For what I'm trying to do, this monster base is an amazing starting point. Now, the one thing I hear about it is it just has like, it's not like, you know, distorted in, in the way that I want. Uh, this says buzzy. You could go tough, raw, whatever. So I'm just going to kind of mess around with this. I might go more towards gritty and thick. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so what I did is I kind of like adjusted this uh, little perform area to get the sound I want out of what I'm trying to do. Like I'm trying to go for the bluesy, you know, stomp kind of rock stuff, right? So I took the tube down as well because I'm not really feeling that distortion. That's just not what I have in my head. In my head, I, I hear like a like a fuzzy distortion, right? Like this just doesn't do it. So we'll get out of that and we'll pick a distortion um, that I really like uh, after I EQ it. Okay, so I'm gonna EQ, I'm always gonna shape things as I go. So as I shape this again, I'm gonna save voltage because I know that this is just gonna take a, a lot of voltage down here, right? That sub frequency, I don't need that. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm also gonna kind of lower this 40, 50 because the kick drum's gonna start taking that, right? And then I want to probably go more around like 500 or so to give me some, some more of that, you know, that horn. And if you solo it out, you can do this with a lot of plugins, right? 
that's what I want. I want that and that that growl, right? So we're gonna go less like of the the real subby stuff and more growl is what I'm doing. Okay, and that's the EQ I'm doing. And then I'm going to after this, let's let's start to drive it a little bit with an overdrive. <laughs> Okay, so that's not the distortion I'm looking for either. So let's go through some distortion stuff. Let's go, let's try distortion just straight up. And let's find a like crunch, warm distortion might work. Let's just try some presets. That's a great starting point, right? So I'm starting to get my palette. I'm starting to get some cool stuff going. So that's great. I want to compress this a little bit. And I also want to get rid of some more of this uh, low stuff. It's really hitting hard. And the 500 may be a little too peaky. Let's just bring that down just a little bit. And uh, the 20, let's bring that up to like 25 or so. So that's a great starting point. The distortion, we might want after the compression. I think that might be cool. So we're gonna control the bass, we're gonna control everything, and then we're going to distort that afterwards, right? So here I'm just gonna grab a compressor. Um, in this case, I'm just going to grab what I have and what I like to use. So um, yeah, let's let's try like a universal audio um, or, or let's go to waves, because a lot of people have waves, right? Um, let's go to waves and let's pick a compressor. Let's do like a, a CL1 or a CL, uh, 11, CL76, right? So this is like an 1176. I like the blue face a lot more than I like the black face. It's just a little bit more aggressive in the mid range, right? So here I'm gonna adjust it for a bass or you can come to the presets and grab like a bass thing, right? But because it's a sub bass, they don't really have that preset in there. So attack, I like it, you know, if you go fast, this is fast. So you turn it all the way to the right, seven is the fastest. This is the slowest, okay? So I'm gonna go kind of like three to four, somewhere around there. Okay, I'm gonna compress enough to where it's like hitting negative seven or so. All right, so let's hear this. And I'm gonna release, I'm gonna go pretty fast on the release. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, and as you start dialing in a channel and you start feeling like, oh, there's something going on here. Like it just kind of feels a little too chunky or it's too driving or something, right? Like I can mess around with the EQ that's feeding the compressor. Like let's try this stuff. You can also change the distortion uh, tone, right? Like mess around with the tone, like where it's at. Uh, you know, mess around with the drive input, mess around with all sorts of stuff because everything's affecting everything, right? <laughs> So I'm just gonna kind of uh, adjust the alchemy at the actual foundation of the sound and I'm gonna mess with this again to drive it into my EQ compression distortion and see if I can get a better spanking sound out of it. Okay, that's more what I'm looking for. I want that, you know, driving stuff. Okay, cool. And now I got a bass. Now I got something to play around with on the bass. So next thing is like, maybe we do like an electric piano, electric keys, dirty organ, something like that, right? Like I'm trying to figure out my palette right now. Remember, that's what we're dedicated to. We're committed to that right now. Um, so let's make sure 
that, we go and we find uh, something that's going to fit this vibe. So I'm going to go into the retro synth again because I thought that was a really good idea, and I think I already have that. And I labeled it bass synth, but we can start calling this like keys or whatever. You know, keys, synth. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter yet. Until we actually find the sound, we're not going to know. All right, so in here, we can hear that's just like a basic, you know, saw sawtooth waveform or something uh let's go to synth keyboards and fm bells waves plectrum keys pure chimes you know smooth glass soft glider uh steam synth might be cool let's just go through some stuff I'm not finding anything in here. So my next choice would be to go to um, the organ, vintage organ that they have in here, right? The B3 is incredible in Logic. Like it's just built in. So let's find something kind of rocky, distorted blues. Uh, here you go, indie rock organ. <laughs> So we want a little more spank on that. Let's try and find something a little bit harder. So this is kind of a cool starting point. All right, so let's let's keep that, and then let's go in and let's EQ out some of the the chunkiness in there. I think it's like in here, All right? Let's get rid of some low end stuff. See how I'm just kind of like mixing as I go. I want you to get really in the habit of doing this when you're getting into sync pitch stuff, right? I will just like have a little spank up at that that 4K area, and then let's distort this as well. Let's throw it through some distortion. This time I'm going to use a plugin that you may or may not have, um, but it'll be the little radiator, and this just gives you like a nice little uh, like almost like a like a tape kind of saturation kind of vibe. I turn the noise off, and I'm just going to mess with this heat and the mix knob, right? <laughs> okay now let's put this in a room so i'm not going to send this time i'm just going to insert uh a reverb here and i'm just going to pop the reverb on which is going to be the end verb uh, you could either do end verb. Actually, I like the silver verb as well. This is great. Uh, great reverb. And like for a room sound, it's, it does it really well. So like uh, you could do room and then. Right now we got like we got that organ in a nice little room. I'm not even going to mess around with much of this stuff. I'm going to leave it. So the size I might. Right, that's it. So I got I got like a nice little distorted, like warm sounding organ. Now let's get like maybe some keys. I still want electric keys, right? So I'm gonna duplicate Command D again, and I'm just gonna change this to keys. I'm gonna go to the electric piano, the suitcase. Uh, yeah, electric piano here. Got a vintage electric piano. Okay, now let's find on a preset. Let's find like a you know driven. Or even like a whirly could be cool. Pretty cool vibe. Let's turn the drive on. So 
this could be a really cool vibe that's um let me see here i'm just trying to make sure i'm in the right realm here all right so let's play this Okay, cool. So I got a nice little palette here. I got some keys. I got an organ. I got a bass. I got, you know, kick snare stuff, right? Uh, the next thing I would want to do is just kind of find some um, some other unique sounds that I can kind of throw in here. They, they don't have to be MIDI, okay? Like, just, just make sure you understand that. Like, they can be audio chops, audio samples. Um, you know, they can be like little splices of stuff, like little snippets of vocal chops, um, you know, horn bursts, whatever, right? Like find stuff that's going to be cool elements for you to mess around with and, uh, to make unique sounds with. Uh, another thing that I really like about the logic sounds built in is, you know, obviously alchemy is amazing, but they also now have studio horns, studio strings. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here that, you know, you can mess around with. So you got like trumpets, you can do like a, a soul section, right? Now, obviously, I got a bunch of crazy shit on the on the the thing here, so I'm gonna turn the distortion off. Now, for this this uh, this trumpet sound, like I might want like a good reverb, or I might even just send it to the other reverb we have for the drums, right? And see what that sounds like. Cool, something that's gonna get a little chunky. Um, and then I want to maybe tape saturate this. You can also use um, one of these, like I really love in uh, in here is the, there's like a, an exciter in here that's really cool. All right, so let's find that. I can't remember where it's at, modulation maybe? Yeah, so let's find this. So we have ring shifter, scanner, spreader, tremolo, chorus, ensemble, flanger. I mean, there's all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, let's try a chorus on this. Just give it a little chorusing. <laughs> That's really cool. So before the chorus, I'm going to throw something that's going to kind of saturate it and get it a little bit more crunchy. You might even throw like a, like a guitar amp, right? Like throw it through a guitar amp. Just see what you can do. Do some, do some weird stuff, right? Make something interesting. You got to mess around. Like this sounds cool to me. Like, it kind of sounds like a filtered thing going on, you know, like. There you go. You can throw some reverb on that. You can throw, uh, you know, some tremolo, whatever from the amp. Um, you can mess around with these, the, the microphone positioning, you know, you can do a different microphone. Like you can do more of like a 421, get a little fatter. <laughs> Uh, then if you have anything like special stuff, like, uh, you know, plugins that are like tape design kind of stuff. I did a plugin of the week on this one, uh, which I really like is, um, this cassette from uh Clev grand. I think this is really cool. It'll give it kind of a sampled vibe. <laughs>
there you go. Something to give a little spice. Now we have a nice little template put together. We're going to go, uh, yeah, we're going to start to find a progression. Now in the next module, as you meet me over in the next module, I want you to like really take this into consideration. You got drums, you got claps, you got some stuff, some foundational fundamental stuff. We can add and take away as we go. It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be a starting point where you feel like you can put a chord progression down. You can put a drum a drum, uh, you know, beat down, rhythm section down, uh, a bass and drum chord sort of thing down that you can start writing a melody to. It doesn't need to be perfect, okay? So this is what stops a lot of people in songwriting and something I really just want to take a second to riff on. And it's something that stopped me for over a decade, like easily, I couldn't finish anything because I would get so into EQing and, and the reverb is, oh, the decay's not right. Like, like you haven't gotten anything done. You haven't gotten a song done. Like you have to get the song done first, right? The song is the most important thing. The lyrics, the melody, the uh, the arrangement, the feeling of the song. Um, I'm just getting a palette down and you could have a template, right? You could use the stuff that I've given you. You could take the loops and, and pop them in and start, you know, just creating something. Um, just something. You need a backbone. You need a foundation to write to. You need something that's going to inspire you to write a great song and tell a great story. And that's what we're going to get into is the next module. I'm going to talk about the progression. There's three styles and really only two styles that you would really start a song. Um, and yeah, we're going to we're going to dive right into that in module two. And I'm excited. Hopefully this was really useful. You saw some plugins I'm using. Uh, you see kind of how I'm, I'm putting together a palette. But we're just going to kind of keep refining as we go throughout these modules. And we're going to end up with a full song, which is really exciting. It's going to be a bounced, mastered song that we can take and we can pitch out to someone to, to write, you know, record to. We can place as a sync licensing opportunity. We can do a lot of stuff with a song. A song is powerful. All right, let's go to module two and let's get into it.